So let me first um, again welcome you to the first annual Adi's Make the Change Challenge, a STEM contest that focuses on accessible design uh, and helps us really dig a little bit deeper into um, what makes us all the same um, and how we can um, move the world forward by focusing a little bit more uh, on accessible design uh, and uh, putting disability inclusion um, first and foremost in our lives. Adi B'chinuch is a program that we developed so that this magic that exists in our, uh, our residential centers in Jerusalem and in the Negev, in Israel's south, the magic that we feel with the inclusion and the diversity and all the wonderful things that we are constantly feeling and putting forth into the world on a daily basis, we can share that with North American students. And Adi B'chinuch pre presents them with plug and play uh, modules uh, that present concepts about disability inclusion, what is disability, why disability inclusion um, is important and powerful, and how they can become agents of change in their own communities. This year we decided to, while doing a lot of different virtual modules, things that we were, that we were creating uh, for the educators to show in the classroom, uh, virtual tours and the like, we decided to do, to launch this, uh, this contest um, Adi's Make the Change Challenge so that we could um, really start a conversation and, uh, and have the, the different um, students at the different schools who participate uh, in Adi's programming um, to have them really start to uh, do some research and to tap into that, um, that message of the importance of disability inclusion and how they can become agents of change. So as you know, parents and educators, the young women represented here did an exceptional job. Before we get to them, I just want to uh, introduce uh, our panel of judges. In alphabetical order, we have Zahava Altshul, who is our director of sports therapy, as well as a incredible special education teacher at Adi Jerusalem. There is Zahava. Hi. <laughs> we have Rafi Fisher, the Director of Media, Media Communications at ORCAM. Rafi, say hi to the people. Hi, everyone. We have myself, and then we have uh, Ab Abigail Klein-Leichman, who is a veteran journalist, as well as the Associate Editor and, and an Innovation Journalist at Israel 21C. Abby, say hello. Well, Ellie, thank you. Hi, everybody. Really good to see you. Really excited to be here. And finally, last but not least, we have, um, we have Shael, Shael Yitzchak, who is a former robotics teacher at the Shalom Hartman Institute and the founder of the Learning Works Hacker Camp. Shael, say hello. Nice to see everybody. Okay. So now that we've introduced all the adults on this call, let's get to the real stars of the show, shall we? We have five exceptional students with five exceptional accessible design ideas that were chosen from over a hundred. We have also something that I was talking with the judges about previously, but in a prior call when we were actually making the decisions. If you look around, you'll see a lot of really proud families of five really exceptional young women. There is not a young man on this call how cool is that? Uh, I'm not so well done, girls. I'm not so surprised, quite honestly. Neither is Shail, who uh, deals with uh, with a lot of of really brilliant and talented and innovative young women in his hacker camp. Um, but it really just shows you um, that uh, the future is bright, and these young women are leading the way. So let's start. Let's introduce them. The, we have the mixable that was. Um, submitted by Sahar Azulai from Sheck Hill Community School in South Florida. We have Accessible Groceries for All that was submitted by Hodaya Harari of the Margolin Hebrew Academy, the Feinstein Yeshiva of the South. We have the Finger Gripper that was submitted by Dahlia Prezant of the David Posnack Jewish Day School in South Florida. We have the Safety Tape, Lindsay Shapiro, Charles E. Smith Jewish Day School in Rockville, Maryland. 
And we have travel glasses submitted by Alexandra Wexler, also of the David Posnack Jewish Day School in South Florida. We're gonna start with the mixable and I'm going to, uh, to ask Sahar to talk a little bit about, uh, about the whole idea behind it, why she chose it, um, what it's supposed to do, uh, who it is for. So Sahar, please unmute yourself and tell the good people on this call all about the mixable. Okay, so um, the mixable, it's basically like, um, it's gonna be plastic cylinder and it's made up of two different materials. So um, half of the like chambers are gonna be hard plastic and the other half are gonna be like, like kind of like a piping bag so you can like squeeze it. And that you store like different decorations to, like bake and like decorate cakes and cookies. And the, and it comes like a rotating tip head. So like you have different like ways to, like put the um, decorations on. And um, I chose this um, to help people with SMA. So my cousin has SMA, which is um, spinal mus muscular atrophy. And it's a neurological disorder that affects young children all over the world. And it causes a person's muscles to be extremely weak and there's no cure. And basically the muscles start to like slowly deteriorate. And um, basically her older sister has a small business where she sells baked goods, but most of it is um, like cookies. And um, my cousins, my cousins are very talented and they like to um, decorate a lot. And so when she wants to help her older sister, she can't because um, it's harder for her to help with the, to, with the decorations, like hold everything. So with one simple, like, um, like one simple machine, it'll be easier to have multiple decorations and you put icing and you can put sprinkles and whatever you want in it. And it'll be like a, easier and like cleaner way to like help people with any form of like not just people with SMA but anyone that has any form of like um like not good things with their muscles or they have something where they can't focus on multiple things at one time it's easier for them to focus and do it to like decorate things in an easier way tremendous idea really tremendous idea when we went through the uh each and every one and gave them a score, uh, what stood out was that there was at least one judge for each one of your uh, five incredible innovative ideas um, who it really spoke to them. Uh, this idea spoke the most to Abby. So, do you wanna give a little a few comments as to uh, why this spoke to you? I, I liked the fact that there was such a personal connection here, that Sahar was really had a, a specific person in mind with a specific issue that honestly I would never have thought of, and most people would never think, um, you know, why would why would anybody need to to help decorate cookies? It, it didn't it didn't seem like a, a need that I'd ever heard of before. But she knows this from her cousin that this is something that's a quality of life issue for her, and obviously it must affect other people too. So I I I appreciated that she had that, that personal connection to it. I'm sure that uh, Shael can agree that showing these kinds of diagrams show that you're, you're on the way to actually creating a product here. Communicates a lot without using many words and it's great. Um, let us have uh, Hodaya Harari tell us about accessible groceries for all, how you came up with the idea and what your vision is here. Thank you. Um, so, my idea was to have shelves that extend and rotate and go up and down for people who have mobility disabilities specifically. And the reason I chose this was because uh, before I entered the contest, I hadn't really thought much about all the things that I enjoy to do and even some of the most practical things that I do that some people with disabilities can't do and I just take for granted. And so I was thinking about some things when I was thinking about the contest. And I remembered that my grandmother who has mobility disabilities. One time we were at the store with my aunt and her and my aunt had to get all the things off the shelf for her. So I just started thinking, why can't she get them herself if there was a way to get them herself? So then I had the idea that there would be shelves in the grocery store in every aisle and divided into bins with the products inside of them, which are secured by prongs and rings so that they won't fall or tip or break, etc. 
and the bins will be labeled with letters and numbers such as A5, C3, B6, like vending machines. And to control the bins, the shoppers can use an app on their phones because who doesn't have a cell phone these days? And the phone will ask what aisle and bin number you want, and the bin will slowly emerge, and you can control it with your phone with directional arrows on the app. And if you have, say, a finger disability, there can also be voice activation that makes sure you, you know, specifically what you're talking about so that there are no mishaps. And to return the bin, there will be a return button to bring the bin back safely to its original position. And in case you forget, there will be an actual button on the bin. So, and if, in case, just so that they don't bump into other people or other shelves in motion, there'll be a motion sensor looking out for other people or shelves coming their way and safely wait. And people could ask for help at the store to help get things off the high shelves and low shelves and the shelves of products that are too deep in. But um, it's um, that people like to be independent and it's inconvenient to ask somebody for help, time consuming, and it also may decrease self-esteem and self-confidence in people because I think, oh, the easiest thing everyone else can do, but I can't do it. So, tremendous, yeah. tremendous, tremendous. Uh, for this one, um, it spoke to uh, our judge, Rafi. Rafi, you wanna talk uh, a little bit about why uh, this spoke to you? So working at Orkham Technologies, we provide, uh, you know, visual, sorry, um, assistive technologies, people with visual uh, disabilities, and also now with reading challenges and soon to be hearing challenges. So these are all populations who have, you know, uh, are are specially able with with a certain um, um, issue. And this is this spoke to me because of the issue of, you know, oh, and I want to just add, what our technology does is raise the level of independence of our users. So they can be on you know this level playing field, so they don't have to feel that they're held back from the, from their peers. Okay, and so what this uh, what this innovation does is, you know, speak to a very specific uh, issue faced by a lot of people, you know, people in wheelchairs, and enables them to go shopping just like anybody else without asking for help, without you know taking like a long process, unneedlessly you know long time because they have this technology. They could be able to, you know, complete their shopping in a in a reasonable amount of time, like 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 uh, like the other shoppers in the store. So, to me, it spoke just about leveling the playing field and being more inclusive, uh, offering technology to be more inclusive for people who are had disability of uh, being in wheelchairs. Uh, we wanted to uh, avoid the uh, the extra difficulty that people might have with um, with prototypes. So we left that whole part of it out of the process, the prototype process. Um, but still, we have a couple of uh, overachievers in our, in our midst. Um, so uh, Ms. Prezant decided that she wanted to create a prototype. Please, Dahlia, tell us about your project. I created a cup that anybody can use very easily because I realized that people even if they don't have a disability, it can be hard for them to hold cups. And I thought how much harder it would be for people with cerebral palsy and similar diseases. So I came up, it's like a grip that you slide your fingers into. And even if you don't can't hold it properly and you let go, it still will not fall or spill. And that means that there doesn't have to be aids at like the table helping people drink because they can do it themselves and it can be moved to any cup it would be made out of like silicon so it can be washed and like you can just put it on any cup and then it can easily be used to drink in the presentation that's on your screen uh, you see the prototype that Dahlia put together really really Simple yet brilliant design here. Um, Shael, again, the maker in our midst, talk a little bit about this design and uh, why it spoke to you. I mean, it's not that none of the other ones did. They all, they're all great. Okay, you have to acknowledge that. Uh, from the beginning. But uh, Dahlia, uh, if you could tell us, did you think of using magnets or capacitors or wire? The prototype is a sock, right? Oh, uh, yeah. 
Okay, so you know what? My children and I, we were just watching parts of uh, Star Wars. They're crazy right now about Star Wars Rebels. One of my heroes in Star Wars, it's not even a person. It's the Millennium Falcon. Okay? It's the spaceship that almost never works, but it's the fastest ship in the galaxy. And who does it fight against? It fights against the Empire, where everything always works. But the thing about the Falcon, the thing about the Millennium Falcon, is it has to, it has to work. So therefore tiny little spunky robot who doesn't even really talk and the big fuzzy dog who also doesn't really talk, uh, they make it work somehow with nothing. The empire has all the resources that it needs, but in the same way that, that, uh, that R2-D2 and a Wookiee make the Millennium Falcon the fastest ship in the galaxy, here you have your Dahlia making a prototype with a sock and I don't even know what you use for the finger things. Didn't occur to you to use magnets and, you know, that's great because often you solve a big problem with a very small change. So that was what I was, that was what I was really liking about this. Aside from that, look at this, look at the presentation, look at the level of research. It's admirable. You, all of us need to, need to aim for that. Okay. Our research should, should aim to identify and solve a problem. If we can do that, we're doing our job well, whatever our job is. If what we do in our background work identifies something that's wrong and fixes it, and also fixes it with R2-D2 and a Wookiee or with a sock and whatever you use to put around the fingers. So that's my opinion. Well done, Dahlia. We move on to Safety Tape by Lindsay Shapiro. Uh, Lindsay. Take us through your uh, thought process here, how you came up with it, um, and um, how you see and why you decided, also you decided, to, uh, to make a prototype. I was thinking and thinking, and I couldn't think of what to make. Um, but then I decided, and I was like thinking, and then I was like, well, how do people who are blind or like visually impaired not run into things everywhere? Um, there's things, on the street and like in buildings called tap tactile paving um and they have like sort of bumps on them so you can know where you are and not like go randomly into the street but um if you were going to use that you have to like install a whole entire different floor but with safety tape it's this tape where you can just cut it and then put your like desired amount of tape on the floor right in front of objects that um, people who are blind tripped on free trip on frequently. Um, and this solution is, um, is good, not only because it can help people like, and you don't necessarily have to use a cane that much anymore with places um, that have safety tape. Um, it also, um, it also is easier to remove. So you don't have to, rip out your floor so i uh i myself want to speak about this one it uh it really really spoke to me it was fascinating to me um the the thought process here because you know i i'm sure that a lot of people here have uh have lived in big cities um have been on subway platforms uh, i was always fascinated with i lived in new york city for quite a while the the bright yellow strips on New York City subway platforms and how it was a really simplistic idea to solving a number of problems. And then when I saw the, even just the first slide of, uh, of Lindsay's presentation, I immediately knew what the idea was. I immediately knew that it was, oh, so we're gonna take that brilliant strip that's on the curbs that we know in big cities um, that's on uh, ramps at, uh, at banks and other places that we see on, on the subway platforms. And we're gonna make it so that it is able to be dispensed in a dispenser and put anywhere you want it, whether it's in a public place, in a private place. Um, let's say you have an individual with a, with a disability, visual impairment, um, um, or, or some other disability that will cause them to, uh, to be tripping and falling. Um, let's say they go to, uh, you know, they rent an Airbnb and they're not used to the surroundings and they need to have a solution where they can be able to get around 
um, with the independence, again, all of these ideas, all of the ideas that are being presented here today um, are, um, these young women are presenting ideas that allow for the independence um, and the accessibility that we're going for. And I think that this one uh, definitely speaks to that quite a great deal. Um, I know that this also spoke to, uh, um, to Abby. Abby, have anything additional to add? Um, I think you said it all, Ellie. I, I think it's a very uh, simple and elegant uh, solution to, to a common problem. And sometimes this, the, these very simple, low-tech kinds of things are, are the, best, uh, the best way to go. Um, everyone can only assume that Rafi loves this one. Um, these are the travel glasses. So, travel glasses. Take it away, Alexandra. Um, so travel glasses, as you can sort of tell by the title, are glasses, but they aren't like your normal glasses that you'd use and you can see things better. They're glasses that do something else. So the travel glasses um, work as if, um, if you it's connected to like a smartphone or a tablet and you use this thing called the voice to text and it, you type in where you want to go or use the voice to text. I don't know why I said type. You can't see if you're using this. Sorry, I'm very nervous. Um, <laughs> don't be so nervous. You're doing great. Um, and it tells you where to go step by step. So you go 10 steps to the left and then make a right here. And then you, uh, some of the other participants brought up that you could bang into items getting to where you want to go if you're blind and can't see things. So um, there is um, a type of, of already made inventions that uses like sensors to make sure you don't bang into an item. And that, and that would, the technology you would use to do that. Um, I, what I'm saying is sort of makes absolutely no sense. So a way to simplify it is um, a Tesla, the way it works, it, you can use self-drive, it tells you where to go and make sure you don't hit other cars getting there. It's sort of the same thing, but with people. So I think that Rafi would disagree. He thinks that it makes a lot of sense. Um, and we have to listen to Rafi because Rafi works for Orcam and he's been talking about and helping develop this stuff for quite a few years now. So Rafi, why does everything that Mrs. Wexler just say make perfect sense? Okay, so as Ellie alluded to, our, our very first device um, at Orcam, and we consulted with hundreds of people who are blind and visually impaired in building this device. Um, it's called Orcam II, and it communicates a lot of aspects of the visual world by audio. It's a small device that's actually on the side of glasses. And so the glasses are just the platform, the vehicle basically, if you will, to wear the small device. And it identifies text, reads text, identifies uh, products, recognizes people's faces and that kind of thing. Um, and we actually, one of, Alexandra, one of your aspects of your, of your technology that you're proposing, we've actually started uh, using, which is the voice uh, activation. In our newest feature called Smart Reading, the user actually tells the device, in this case, what newspaper article or what word to find, or if there's a dollar amount to identify, so they don't have to go through the whole page or whole computer screen, they can just speak their preference. And this is very similar to what you're proposing in terms of, but with the GPS aspect, in terms of telling the device or the, or the uh, travel glasses, in this case, where you wanna go. And we actually, work offline, our device. So we don't have a GPS component as of now. You're proposing the very, you know, the very uh, opposite thing in terms of having the connectivity to have the GPS to help the person physically navigate. So where OrCamII is a communication tool, yours is both a communication and a mobility tool, which is really uh, impressive, uh, um, uh, you know, your take on how this could help for people who are blind and visually impaired. So I definitely think there's a ton of fine tuning involved, of course, but it's a very good concept. And I, uh, it definitely speaks to me, as Ellie said. So, Rafi, does Alexandra have the uh, job at OrCam? Uh, an internship at the very least, you know, we'll go from there. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay. Um, I've been holding out our, uh, our ace, guys. Zahava Ultral, as I introduced her before, is a 
tremendous special educator. And she is also a secret maker and innovator. Um, all of our special educators at Adi um, in Jerusalem and in the Negev, uh, they are multi-talented and they use both the technology that is provided to them as well as creative thinking to come up with incredible, incredible devices uh, that help promote the growth and development uh, of our D residents, children, adolescents, and young adults. Um, Zahava, I want to hear from you about <laughs> all five of these. Oh my what, goodness. What speaks to you, and you can even just speak to it as like a general category, what speaks to you about the inventiveness uh, of these young women um, and, uh, and how you, as someone who deals uh, with technology, as a maker, um, you know, just your, your insights um, about, uh, about how they went about this process um, and, uh, and how it can turn into a career like yours. I was extremely, extremely impressed with all of your ideas. Um, one thing that stuck out in mind to all of you is your consideration and the fine tuning that you went through to think of all the small little details that, um, that you know, some, that could be wrong with, with someone or you know, some kind of disability and, and how we can solve each little problem. Um, really from all of, the, all of the entries, every single one of you really went to that next level. And you know, it was very, uh, very, very impressive. Um, what I liked also, I'm coming from, I'm a very low tech person. So the things that I do are usually not uh, involving the technology. It really spoke to me definitely was those ones that you can just, you know, put on your head, the, the sock with the cup and, and the tape and things that you can, like you said, you can take it with you anywhere and you don't rely on, on um, Wi-Fi or, you know, our Zoom here, but just something that will just work for anyone. Like, so I really, really was amazed by the, by the, all of the ideas, but especially the ones that kind of, you know, something from nothing. There's this amazing book that I read to my kids, uh, something from not you make something from nothing it's the guy who had the sweatshirt and then and then it got dirty so we had to go to the tie and then I'm sure some of you recognize it I think it's a uh, PJ library book or something so um, really it's incredible absolutely incredible all of your ideas and all of your thoughtfulness and and trying to understand the world that, that we're coming from even though you might not be a part of that world is truly truly incredible and uh, thank you um just want to give a shout out um, to three educators on the call who are not showing their faces, but I want to say hi to them anyway, not to embarrass them, but just to uh, make sure that they, uh, they know that we love them. One just shown himself, Andrew Leibowitz. Um, we have Ms. Dana Wald. There she is. Uh, and of course, Alana Lazar as well, uh, who helped with the development of some of these incredible, incredible ideas. Um, thank you so much, guys. Um, we, uh, we just want to acknowledge your incredible partnership uh, and your attention to, uh, to these innovators as they went through their process. So it's time to share my screen again, guys, because we have got to know who's the winner. Who is the winner of ID's first annual Make the Change Challenge? here in JDAME 2021. We've heard of, we've heard all of these incredible ideas. Again, there was a field of over a hundred uh, presentations, entries sent to us with some truly innovative, out of the box thinking, but we had to choose five. To Dahlia, Sahar, Alexandra, Hodaya, and Lindsay, I say thank you to all of you for um, sharing your ideas with us, for taking this seriously, and for most importantly, um, to promoting um, real disability inclusion throughout the month of February. The real point behind this whole process um, was to engage you, to get you thinking uh, with your heart and with your mind, to encourage others to do the same, to acknowledge the shared humanity um, uh, in every single person, uh, the potential of every single person, because only then do we have the ability to really create real tikkun olam to, uh, to change the world in a real way. That said, the winner of Adi's very first 
annual Make the Change Challenge is? Lindsay Shapiro. Congratulations, Lindsay. Congratulations to Lindsay. And once again, thank you one and all. Um, it is uh, so important to us that all of you were part of this process. Lindsay, you are the proud grand prize winner of our $1,000 grand prize, which is a gift from the Avram and Esther Klein Young Entrepreneurs Fund. Um, we're sure that you will use the money well to advance your education, perhaps create an even better prototype and uh, go work for OrCam too or some other organization where you can, uh, you can start improving the world. Thank you to the parents for encouraging your young women. Thank you to the educators for being part of this process. Uh, all the educators on the call, um, I will be in touch with you because we have to follow up and see what we can do to, uh, to move all of this forward even more, uh, both for the individual students that are on this call, as well as many others in the year to come, in the years to come, because again, this is only the first annual. This will be an annual thing. Uh, so uh, Jennifer, Cassandra, um, Alana, Dana, Andrew, um, Rifki, um, and all the other educators involved, we have what to discuss because we have many, many more uh, innovative young women and men to, uh, to push towards um, true inclusion, inclusion and accessible design ideas. Thank you all. Uh, Lindsay and co, we'll be in touch immediately after this call. Thank you to all of our judges. Thank you once again to, uh, to Zahava, to Rafi, to Shael, and of course to Abby. Um, and uh, I wish you all a, uh, a great beginning of summer. I hope that uh, the, the uh, pandemic will end shortly and I'll be able to come to your individual schools and meet you in person sometime soon. Thank you all again for being part of Adi's Make the Change Challenge. Talk to you soon.